I'm Caitlin Bird from Caitlin's Animal Training, where I train service dogs. And we've got an article here today from Bloomberg Law. This looks really interesting, guys. Uh, I cannot wait to get into this. So, conductor service dog case sets up ADA accommodations battle. Whether accommodation, so there's a little summary here, whether accommodation only to perform essential functions, this seems to be uh, part of the things that they're disputing, worker offered alternative job where service dog is allowed. A Union Pacific Railroad uh, conductor vying to bring his service dog to work to help with PTSD related to his military service will try to convince a federal appeals court that he's protected under federal disability law. A three-judge panel of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit is set to hear oral argument Tuesday in a case that could clarify whether the Americans with Disabilities Act only requires that employers provide accommodations needed to perform a job's essential functions. The Eighth Circuit decision will apply to employee, employers in Alaska, uh, Arkansas, Iowa, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, and South Dakota, but could also influence other courts. The conductor, Perry Hoffman, is attempting to reinstate a $250,000 jury award against Union Pacific for violating the ADA. Um, which is interesting because, you know, if you read the Q&A on the ADA's web ADA website about service dogs, they do explicitly state that you know, dogs can accompany you on the job as long as it doesn't put you or others at risk. I don't know enough about the job to say one way or the other. An Arkansas district court vacated the award last year after finding that his accommodation request isn't the kind of privilege or benefit of employment the law requires. The ADA's legislative history also doesn't support recognizing a PTSD service dog for workers regardless of their disability, the trial court found. Hold on. The ADA's legislative history doesn't support recognizing a PTSD service dog for workers. Huh. I want to I wanna know more about that. A uh, Hoffman admitted he can do his job without bringing his Rottweiler Atlas in the train cab with him to help with flashbacks and migraine headaches, it nodded. Okay, so it's not required. There are other ways of going about it, it seems. Hopman pointed to the 10th Circuit 2012 decision in Sanchez versus Vislack and the 6th Circuit's 2015 Gleed versus AT&T Mobility Search. Okay. Uh, to support his claim that his accommodation request was reasonable but the district court found the facts in those cases distinguishable, so they're not the same. Accommodation extent. Hopman, a former U.S. Army flight medic who served in Iraq in 2008 and Kosovo in 2010, accused the district court of misstating the nature of his accommodation request. He never demanded a right to work without mental or physiological pain, as the district court claimed. Hopman said in his... I can't with that word. <laughs> Instead, he's simply trying to manage the worst symptoms of his disabilities while at work. Case law suggests that the ADA must be construed broadly consistent with its purpose to ensure that workers with disabilities have equal employment opportunities as employees who aren't living with disabilities. So it almost sounds as if, so he states that um he was misrepresented right for what he was looking for um but at the same time if that's not what you're looking for my question is does the ada cover that right because essentially what he's saying it sounds like it's a support dog it sounds like it's almost like an esa that he needs the support during work with um, so that's interesting but having a service dog aboard a train would be unsafe and inconsistent with federal safety regulations, the railroad said in its response brief. Union Pacific offered Hopman an alternative position, a yard job where he could bring Atlas without violating federal safety law. Okay, so safety is a concern. I wish I knew the details. <laughs> like, what about it with safety is this? Hopman took that job for a time, but eventually sued to force the company let him bring Atlas aboard the freight trains. 
Um, I kind of want to, I kind of want to do a deep dive into freight trains because I mean they are large, they are heavy. Um, you don't want toes and things getting stuck in places they shouldn't be getting stuck in. But there's booties for that. If the appeals court accepts Hopman's reading of the ADA, employers would need would be forced to provide workplace accommodations employees don't necessarily need, including those that contravene other federal laws or regulations, the company argued. Okay, so that's what Union Pacific is arguing. The Association of American Railroads and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce field that word, briefs in support of Union Pacific. Robin Teisver, a spokesperson for the railroad, told Bloomberg Log in, Law in a statement that the company has profound history of recruiting and employing military veterans. About 20% of our workforce are veterans. In this case, we attempted to accommodate this person's needs without jeopardizing the safety of our employees and the public. And I need to know specifics. I have so many questions. Counsel for Hopman didn't immediately reply to a request for comment. And these are the representatives for union... Uh, I guess they don't state representatives for the individual person. Joe, there's nothing there. Huh. I have so many questions. Um, does anyone here, I would love for you guys to comment down below. Uh, I, I am very not familiar with the legal system. But I would like to know from somebody who is, um, because one of the things that I hear and that people know, like, you know, certain things are made publicly available, uh, certain cases, I don't know, um, like, when that happens. Um, like, is it during the case that it's available? Is it after everything's judge and jury? I Probably after, I would imagine. But this is interesting. Um, and then where would you find that information? I could probably, I don't, like, I feel like I, kn I know for a fact I can find it in Google search, but I don't even know what keywords to start looking for. Like, I don't know. <laughs> what do I even search? So if you know, um, maybe where, I, I would honestly love to see more um, law stuff regarding the ADA and service dogs and kind of just, you know, get a better history of who filed, why they filed, what are the implications who won, why they won, who lost, why did they lose, you know? Um, so let me know down in the comments below. Um, uh, there is another course, this was a really short article, so there's another one. Hold on just a second here. Maybe it's related, maybe not. Um, let's see, this, this is from Reuters. Judges skeptical that employer required to allow veteran service. Center. So this might be the same thing. Hold on, this one was published January 10th. This one was published, no, but it's got the same stock photo. Let's see. What's the summary? Union Pacific didn't, okay, so so it is Union Pacific denied veterans bid to bring service off to work. Judge says employees don't have to mitigate symptoms of disabilities. An appeals panel concerned about expanding protections for workers. So this seems like the same thing, even though, okay, so this was published same day. 3.13 and 5.30 in the morning. Okay, so this just might be a regurgitation of what we already saw. Hold on. It looks like it's rewritten a little bit. Hold on just a sec. Let me read through this. Okay, so it looks like this article is going in a little bit more detail. Here it says, Circuit Judge James Loken suggested that under Griffin's theory, the ADA would require employers to ensure that not only with disability, that not, that not only that workers with disabilities can fulfill their job duties, but that they feel good while doing so. Again, this is kind of leaning towards like the ESA route. And that would make it much more difficult for employers to have ADA claims dismissed at an early stage. Joe, that's not even your bed. Okay. So let me see. Let's read this and see if Reuters can add in any, um, any clarity into this. 
A U.S. appeals court panel on Tuesday seemed hesitant to revive a Union Pacific Railroad engineer's claim that he should be able to bring a service dog to work to prevent migraines and anxiety caused by his military service. Judges on an 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals panel in St. Louis expressed concerns that a ruling in favor of the engineer, Perry Hopman, could open employers up to a flood of lawsuits claiming they violated federal law by denying accommodations that would mitigate symptoms of workers' disabilities. Hopman, a former combat flight medic who served in Iraq and Costco. Okay, yes, we, we know this. Um, denied in 2016. A jury in 2021 sided with Hopman, but a federal judge in Little Rock, Arkansas last year tossed out the verdict and dismissed the case. John Griffin, a lawyer for Hopman, told the Eighth Circuit on Tuesday that the ADA entitled Hopman to an accommodation that would allow him to do his job at the same level as co-workers without disabilities. But again, the migraines, and there was something else um, that Griffin, is it Griffin? No, it's Hop, Hopman. Hopkin? Hopman. The symptoms that Hopman mentions um, of their own volition say that the dog doesn't, I mean, the dog does help with that, but there are alternatives for him to use that work equally well. Entitled Hopman to accommodation that would allow him to do his job at the same level as co-workers on disabilities. But Circuit Judge James Loken suggested that under Griffin's theory, the ADA would require employers to ensure that not only workers with disabilities can fulfill their job duties, but that they feel good. So if a worker says, I need a two-hour lunch or it will aggravate my migraines, is that an accommodation, Loken asked. I would argue it's an undue hardship to give employees unlimited lunch breaks. It's not unlimited, it's two hours. Not unlimited. Um, the ADA does not require employers to grant accommodations that would be overly burdensome. So it's a jury issue, Logan said. It could be, Griffin responded. Now we've exposed the breadth of your argument, the judge said. Like this transcript, that's what I'm looking for, court transcripts. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I need to Google, how to find court transcripts. I think I got it. <laughs> I think I got it. Um, now we've exposed the breadth of your argument. I have to worry about applying the standard you're arguing. For Logan or for Griffin? I don't know. It's been a day already. Um, Union Pacific's lawyer, Stephanie Schuster of Morgan Lewis and Bacchus said the ADA requires only that workers with disabilities be afforded the same benefits and privileges of employee, employment as their colleagues. And that does not extend to addressing stress or pain. So you can have, a, you can work a job in, with stress and pain, even though others aren't experiencing dress, stress or pain. I'm not sure what the argument is here. If mitigating pain is a benefit or privilege of employment, every accommodation is a benefit or privilege of employment, and there is no limiting principle, she said. Schuster's comments echoed concerns raised by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Commerce in an in a brief filed last year, the chamber said requiring employers to modify workplace practices to address worker symptoms would inundate them with accommodation requests and lawsuits. Until you fixed it. The Eighth Circuit panel includes Circus Judge Levensky Smith and Roger Wallman, who on Tuesday both suggested that bringing the dog to work may have improved Hopman's working conditions, but was not necessary to him performing the essential functions of his job. You know, I feel like this is really hard. I mean, it's not, right? If you're talking about quality of life standard and human just common human decency to not be in pain. You know, what are the five freedoms, right? One of them is to not be in pain. Um, I, it, it, it just seems very unempathetic to me to look at someone who is performing 
a job for you as a company and that job is wearing on their joints is physically harming them in some way long term because they have to do repetitive tasks and repetitive motions like does your does the health insurance with you as a company that you're providing this person even cover that um are you paying for his fucking migraine pills like what i understand your business and you're about making money but you also can't just Put your and push your employees to the side like that you know like that's that to me is deeply ethically wrong <sighs> interesting the ada only requires employers to provide reasonable accommodations while an employee would otherwise not be able to do a good job duties yeah i think i think that might be if that's right if that's what they're basing the whole argument off of I think that's the problem, right? Because if that's, if that is the law, the law is saying, or the ADA law is saying, you're right, if, if this passes, if this is, if this is the argument that wins, if that passes, then that shows that it only, again, the individual person doesn't matter. And what matters is the end result that that person can do right it's the person is a commodity is literally what i feel this statement is saying again i'm not a lawyer not legal advice i don't know exact i don't i honestly don't i mean i'm doing the best i can with the information i have here but that's what it speaks to me um the case is hopman versus union pacific railroad it's u.s circuit court of appeals oh okay so mate oh oh haha okay i'm gonna look this up I'm gonna look this up. This might end up being a longer video. For Hopman, John Grafton, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I can't do these groups, man. Um, okay, okay, so these are representatives. All right. Griffin and Schuster. Hold on, let's look this up. I wonder. Okay, I'm, I'm a little excited here. Okay, let's see. Um Law 360, case text, is that it? Case text? Hotman argues that you know the court should ignore. Let's open this one. Let's see what this does. Oh, it's a whole PDF. Is this the court documents? It lo oh, it looks like it. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you guys would like to read this document yourself, because I, listen, I can read it. I, I guarantee you I am not going to be able to translate this properly. But if you want to read this document yourself, you can go to this website, peacetext.com. Look in Hotman versus Union uh, Pacific Railroad. Okay, that's what you want to look up. And you can literally, it looks like there's a downloadable PDF. Hopefully there's no viruses on that. Again, I don't know. I've never visited this website before. But, um, oh, it says opinion. Oh, case details. Hold up. There's tabs up here. Opinion and case details. <laughs> can you tell I'm new? Um, citations. Oh, okay. How long does this go? This is this is a whole thing. Like, look, I'm I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling as fast as I can. That this is this is a page. This is a read. All right. Uh, verdict is this verdict conclusion? B I don't know. Again, don't trust me. <laughs> These are all opinions. The court grants Union Pacific renowned, renewed motion for judgment as a matter of law. The court will enter judgment for Union Pacific matter of law. Mr. Hopman's motion for equitable relief is denied. Court grants Mr. Hopman's motion to strike. Legal terms, man. Like, I've heard this, but I'm not. The court orders the clerk to strike docket number 1934 from the record. It is ordered on March 30th, 2022. Ah, okay. Was, now, was this the old case or is this the new case? so many questions 
I have so much to learn. This must have been the old cave. Okay. And that makes sense if this one has been reopened. Wow. Okay. So that was a journey. Guys, um, keep an eye on this case. This is very interesting. And um, I'm going to keep an eye open. Hopefully I'll get more Google alerts for this one. Um, and maybe we'll be able to see more of it down the road and see what, see what happens. All right. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you guys in the next article. Make sure to visit me on social media. I'm on TikTok most actively as Caitlin's Animals as well as Instagram and as Caitlin's Animals and Facebook as Caitlin's Animal Training. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a good one.